I also gave you another uh, homework question that uh, I asked you to count the Sanskrit meters uh, where the syllables have length exactly one or two, and we want to count. We wanted to count those meters which has length exactly n syllables. I, I mean, uh, exactly n. Uh, you know where the the length of the syllable can be either one or two, right? So how many such meters are possible? How many distinct meters are possible with this uh, property? And we we all already uh, said that like we have something like this, right? We have you know L uh, denotes the 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 laghu or the short syllable, and uh, G denotes the guru or the uh, double length uh, length two syllable. So to find a recursion formula, what we are going to do is to first try to find an uh, you know relation between these two things, right? I mean, uh, something uh, to the earlier thing. Can we find such a relation? So we uh, just look at the possible scenarios. So f zero, right? Zero length means that there is, you know, you can only do in one way, right? Basically, you don't write anything, right? So there is precisely one way to do that. So that for f zero is one. Now what is f one? F one is meters of length exactly one. Now if the meter has exactly length one, we cannot use uh, syllables of length two, right? So guru cannot be used. Only lagu can be used. So the only possibility is to have the singleton l, right? What about uh, if the length is 2? If the length is 2, we can have either LL or G, right? LL has length 2 and G has also length 2. What about uh, length 3 meters? Well, we can have 3 lagus LLL, 1 lagu followed by a guru or 1 guru followed by a lagu. And if you uh, spend a little more time, you can figure out there is nothing else possible. So, therefore, exactly three of them are. Now, one observation that we can make is that if the last, you know, uh, syllable that we are going to add is a lagu, We are going to get uh, a meter of length exactly n from a meter of length exactly n minus 1. Right? So, if you take any meter of length n minus 1, add a leg hood at the end, you will get a meter of length uh, n. Similarly, if you take a meter of length n minus 2 and add a guru at the end, you will get again a meter of length n. But these two meters are different because the last syllable is a lagu in the first case and a guru in the second case. And these are the only possibilities, right? Because every meter of length n must either end in a lagu or in a guru. Now, if you remove the last l, you will get a meter of length n minus 1. And if you remove the guru, you will get a meter of length n minus 2. So, there is a bijection between the meters of length n minus 1 and the meters when it ends in L and there is a bijection between the meters of length n minus 2 and the meters that ends in a G. We can observe it here like for example in the set F3 right we have uh, you know the, the ending is a G guru means that the previous one was length and uh, uh, one of the things in F1 which is this precisely one that is your L and uh, if it was a lagu it could be any of the uh, meters in F2, which is an LL or a G. So, once we have this observation, we get the recurrence relation, right? So, Fn plus 2 is equal to Fn plus 1 plus Fn. So, a meter, you know, so this is what we just observed. A meter with the length n plus 2 is obtained by adding L at the end of a meter of length n plus 1 
or by adding a g at the end of a meter of length n so that is fn plus 2 is equal to fn plus 1 plus fn so this uh, recurrence relation uh, is already uh, known by uh, name like now the, these numbers are called hemachandra fibonacci numbers uh, in fact uh, you know it, earlier it used to be called just fibonacci numbers but then they found out that hemachandra did the work before uh, fibonacci uh, he is an indian mathematician in fact a, a jain mathematician if i remember correctly who lived uh, before Fibonacci and in fact uh, this was known even much before. Okay? For example, I mentioned uh, the Meru Prasara of Pingala, right? So the Pingala in his work on meters, you know, his work is on meters uh, called Chanda Shastra. Chandas is a meter. Uh, basically describes these numbers, okay? He doesn't give uh, the, you know, the formula or anything. But then, uh, you know, he describes this. And you know he observed that you know this was this kind of a pattern, and uh, there was some work in between uh, Pingala, who was in uh, maybe 500 or 600 BC, uh, to you know uh, after around uh, maybe thousand years, maybe like Hemachandra, and then later Fibonacci came. Uh, in between, there were some other uh, work in which apparently these formulas were discovered, but we don't have the original. Uh, we only have the reference given by Hemachandra, who talks about some other mathematicians who did, uh, uh, you know, discover this formula. But uh, we still give the credit to Hemachandra uh, because we don't have the original manuscript. Okay. Anyway, so these are called uh, Hemachandra uh, or Fibonacci numbers, and uh, we have the uh, the. So the Fibonacci numbers or Hemachandra numbers occurs uh, several times in literature. I mean, uh, in the in combinatorics, it, it occurs uh, naturally in many places in uh, in in uh, the nature, right? Because the numbers will be something like one, one, then two, three, then five, eight, thirteen, right? Because I had the previous thing, twenty-one, thirty-four, etc. And if you look at many or most of the flowers will have their number of petals will be in days and you know there are many other things and uh, we can uh, try to find out uh, you know a formula to calculate the fibonacci numbers we will do it later when we look at generating functions there are also other ways to uh, calculate the formulas from the recursion relation maybe you can try uh, you know can we do uh, find the you know formula for Fibonacci or Hamadra numbers by you know using your own methods. Just uh, just give it a try. It will be fun. Okay. Now, so we are looking at partitions of n into exactly k parts. Suppose we we you know we don't worry about exactly k, but we want to partition into any number of parts, right? Now, how many are there? Okay. So, of course, we know that if you sum over all possible k ranging from 1 to n, we will get all possible uh, partitions. So, therefore, if you sum over all the uh, Stirling numbers of second kind, s and k, where k ranging from 1 to n, again, we will get the uh, number of all partitions. Right. So, therefore, uh, this uh, a number called bell number uh, can be calculated by the summation. Now, what I want you to do is to prove the following recurrence relation of bell numbers. So, bell numbers follow the following recurrence relation that is the theorem that b of n plus 1 is equal to summation k is equal to 0 to n, n choose k b of k, where b of 0 I define to be 1. Okay, <clears throat> so b of n is the number of all partitions of n, you know, the set uh, 1 to n, 
to any number of blocks right so that is the definition and it should satisfy the recursion relation so similar to the argument that we did in case of uh, snk prove that b of n also satisfies a recurrence relation that is given here okay, so that is a homework <coughs> now we already uh, looked at what is called uh, uh, compositions of integers right so we have weak composition and we have compositions right now something very closely related is uh, integer partition okay so an integer partition of an integer n is a sequence let's say mu is equal to mu1 mu2 etc mu k of positive integers such that summation mu i is equal to n and mu1 greater than or equal to mu2 greater than or equal to etc greater than or equal to mu k so the only difference is the the last part right so we wanted uh, you know a composition of integer to be you know the positive integers where let us say lambda 1 to lambda k says that summation lambda i is equal to n but now we are saying that okay we also want to write this in uh, decreasing order right mu 1 greater than equal to mu 2 greater than equal to etc mu k or in other words what we are saying is that we don't really worry about the order right uh, right so in the composition we were saying that okay if one is appearing uh, at the first position and two is appearing in the second position is different from two is appearing at the first position and one is appearing at the second position but here we are saying that okay we will make all them all of them uniform by writing in the decreasing order so therefore we are not really worried about the the order there right so that is what uh, it makes the difference so integer partitions are precisely uh, partition of the integer to uh, let's say k uh, smaller integers such that their sum is positive integers such that their sum is exactly n now the number of uh, integer partitions of a given integer n right the total number of distinct partitions is denoted by p of n and p of nk is the number of integer partitions of n into exactly k parts now given a partition uh, integer partition mu the length of uh, the partition mu is the number of distinct parts which is k right if mu is mu into mu k the length of mu is the number of its parts which is uh, k and the area of mu right denoted by uh, mu within uh, two lines is uh, n right the number that uh, mu is partition so that is called area so why it is called area we will see uh, very soon so let us look at some uh, examples okay. so let us take the number let us say 5 and we want to find the partitions of 5 so what are the partitions of 5 well 5 can be written as just itself right or you can write it as uh, 4 comma 1 right you can write it as 3 comma 2 you can write it as 3 comma 1 comma 1 Then you can write it as uh, 2, 2, 1, right? Then you can write it as 2, 1, 1, 1. Then you can write 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? these are uh, possible ways of writing uh, 5 as uh, decreasing uh, numbers right sum of decreasing numbers how many possible ways are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right so p of 5 if i have not missed anything right p of 5 is equal to 7 right partitions the total number of partitions of uh, 5 there are 7 of them 
Now, what about P of 5, 1? So, how many partitions of 5 are there into exactly one part? There is only 1, right? 5 itself. What about P of 5, 3? So, we need exactly 3 parts. So, what are the exactly 3 parts? There is one here, there is one here, and that is all I can find, right? So, there are 2 ways. What about P of 5, 4? Again, if you look at this, there is only 2, 1, 1, 1, and there is nothing else I can find, right? So, there is exactly 1. Similarly, you can ask for P of 5, 2, 5, 5, right? And uh, if you add all of these things, it should be again uh, 7, right? So, yeah, we can even we'll just write it P of 5, 2 is equal to P of 5, 5 is equal to, right? What is P of 5, 5? Exactly 1. 5, 2 is there is 4, 1 and 3, 2. So there are two. And if you add uh, 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2, you get again 7. Right? So that is okay. <coughs> now, so just a remark the number of compositions of n, right, is 2 raised to n minus 1. Now, I don't remember whether we proved it or not. I think we have not. So, uh, I can give it as a homework. So, homework prove uh, that the number of compositions of n is uh, 2 raised to n minus 1 by finding a bijection to a suitable set. So, define a set which has exactly 2 raised to n minus 1 elements and then show that there is a bijection from the number of compositions of n, right? I mean, uh, uh, bijection from the set of all compositions of n to the set. Uh, with 2 raised to n minus 1 elements. So that will prove that uh, number of compositions is 2 raised to n minus 1. Now, on the other hand, uh, P of n, right? So, see, like for the uh, number of compositions, we have a nice formula, right? 2 raised to n minus 1. On the other hand, P of n is a kind of uh, difficult uh, to find a nice formula. But uh, actually, one exists. And this formula was given by R.D. Uh, Rademacher and uh, Ramanujan. So, the formula is as follows. I will just state it. It is as follows. Uh, P of n is equal to 1 by pi square root of 2 summation k is equal to 1 to infinity a k of n square root of k into d by dx of sin hyperbolic of pi by k in square root of 2 by 3 into x minus 1 by 24 divided by square root of x minus 1 by 24 evaluated at x is equal to n where a k of n is summation over all 1 less than or equal to h less than or equal to k gcd of h comma k is equal to 1 omega h k e raised to minus 2 pi i n h by k and omega h k is a specific complex 24 k root of unity. Okay, so, this is the formula that is given by uh, Hardy, Radamasher and Ramanujan. And this is, you know, this finds it exactly, right, P of n is equal to this, which is itself in, uh, is very surprising. And uh, as you can see, it's not very easy to calculate. Now, uh, yeah, so oh, there are some approximations of this from the expansion of this uh, formula, uh, but that is uh, not again uh, something that we are going to look at. Okay. Fine. Now, uh, as a homework, you can enumerate right all integer partitions of 7 and 8 so basically write down the integer partitions of 7 and 8 how many are there count the number of them and also write each one individually so this is a nice homework to just uh, you know just to uh, count now we can also uh, prove a recursion formula for counting p of nk 
where the integer part is of n into exactly k parts. So p of nk is equal to p of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 plus p of n minus k comma k where n and k are positive. With the initial conditions p of n comma k is equal to 0 when k greater than n or k less than 0 or n greater than 0 and k is equal to 0 and uh, equal to 1 when n is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0. So when both n and k are 0, it is 1. And if uh, other cases, uh, n greater than 0 and k is equal to 0, it is 0. k is strictly less than 0, it is 0. And k greater than n, it is also 0. So using these boundary conditions, uh, we can uh, try to prove the, uh, you know, uh, to, to find the find the bounds. If you get uh, uh, if you get an idea how to work this out, you are welcome to try. Now, we are going to prove the recursion relation uh, by the following. Okay, so what what are we going to do? Is the uh, we are going to prove the recursion formula by again. Uh, writing p of nk which is the number of uh, or uh, p of nk is the number of all uh, partitions of n into k parts so what we do is that we look at the set uh, which is the set of all partitions of n into exactly k parts of course its cardinality will be p of nk right so we'll write capital p of nk as this uh, set of all such partitions and then we are going to write P of nk, the, the uh, you know capital P of nk, the set, as a disjoint union of two sets, and show that they are in bijection with uh, partitions of n minus one into k minus one parts and partitions of n minus k into k parts. So uh, I want you to uh, think about this and try to do it yourself. I gave you the idea, but it would be better if you actually. Uh, try to do it yourself. So try to spend some time thinking on this and find out uh, how to find a uh, bijection uh, to this uh, uh, on on the uh, the set is on the left side and the sets that we are counting on the right hand side. So here we are going to do uh, the following. Okay. So what we do is that uh, you know we will write two uh, sets let's say uh, let's say p q and r right let us write q uh, two sets q and r where uh, the set q counts uh, you know some particular type of uh, partitions and r counts another type of partitions so what are these type of partitions that it is going to count so let p of ij be the set of all integer partitions of i into j parts. So therefore, cardinality of p of ij is small p of ij. Now for n and k positive, let us write p of nk as q uh, disjoint union r, where q is the set of all partitions uh, mu1 to mu k, that is in p and k, such that mu k is equal to 1, which is the, the last part is 1, okay. So mu k is the smallest part, right, the last part, that is 1. And then I will write R as the set of all uh, partitions in P and K, such that mu k is strictly greater than 1. Right? So now, since we are writing in the decreasing order of numbers, when uh, the last part are different, then the sets must be uh, disjoint, right. But now since we are looking at all possible partitions where mu k is equal to 1 and mu k is strictly greater than 1, they will cover all partitions into exactly k parts. So therefore, uh, q union r will have exactly p i j uh, elements, right. So that is clear. Now, we want to find a bijection from q to the set of all uh, partitions uh, in p n minus 1 k minus 1 right 
Now, that is easy because, well, what you do is that you take the partition uh, mu1 to mu k and uh, mu k is equal to 1. So, what you do is you, you just remove mu k, right? So, you will get a partition mu1 to mu k minus 1, but this is a partition of n minus 1 into k minus 1 parts, right? Because uh, we have just subtracted 1, you know, because mu k is equal to 1, we just subtracted 1 and we have removed one part. So, therefore, we have exactly uh, how many parts? We have exactly uh, exactly uh, a partition of uh, n minus 1 into k minus 1 parts. Now, if you take any partition of n minus 1 into k minus 1 parts, we can add a 1 at the end and we will get a partition in q, right? Because it is ending in mu k and it has exactly k parts and the sum is equal to n. So, therefore, there is a bijection. Similarly, if you take r and we know that mu k is strictly greater than 1, which means that all of the mu a's are strictly greater than 1, right? Now, since all of the mu a's are strictly greater than 1, I can subtract 1 from each of them. If I subtract 1 from each of the mu i's, I will get mu i minus 1, mu i minus 2, etc., mu, uh, mu k minus 1. And therefore, the sum of the mu i's, the new mu i's, are going to be, or mu i dash, let us say, are going to be exactly n minus k because we subtracted 1 from each of the k mu i's, right? So, it is a partition of n minus k into k parts. But now, again, this is also a bijection. Why? Because you take any partition of n minus k into k parts, exactly k parts, I can add 1 to each of the uh, parts and I will get a partition of n minus k and because I added 1 to the last part, that last part will be strictly greater than 1. And therefore, uh, we have, uh, you know, that belongs to R, it's a partition of n into k parts. So therefore, uh, this uh, gives the entire bijection, right? So we have p of small n k is equal to p of n minus 1 k minus 1 plus p of n minus k comma k. So, uh, to write it more formally, so we claim that cardinality of q is equal to small p of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 and cardinality of r is equal to small p of n minus k comma k. Right? The proof is uh, as follows. mu1 to mu k maps to mu1 to mu k minus 1 is a bijection from q to p of n minus 1 comma k minus 1, right? It's a bijection because I can just add 1 at the end from any element in p of n minus 1 k minus 1 to get an element in q and vice versa, right? I can remove 1 at the end to get a, an element of p of n minus 1 comma k minus 1. Similarly, mu 1 to mu k, uh, the function, you know, maps g, maps uh, mu 1 to mu k to mu minus, mu 1 minus 1, mu 2 minus 1, etc., mu k minus 1. The total uh, sum is going to be n minus k and uh, therefore it's a partition of p n minus k to k, k parts, right? p of n minus k comma k. And again, this is a bijection because I can add one to each of the partitions in uh, p n minus k comma k and I will get a partition of n into exactly k parts again, where the last uh, part is strictly greater than. So that is it. So, we now using the addition rule because they are disjoint sets, Q and R, we get the, uh, the recursion relation. Okay. So, here is a very interesting homework. It's kind of surprising because I am going to define P star of NK to be the number of integer partitions of N with the first part being exactly K. Okay, so mu1 is equal to k, right? So we have mu1, mu2, etc. So the largest part is k, right? So p star nk counts the number of partitions of n, integer partitions of n, where the largest part is k. So p of nk was the number of part, integer partitions of n into exactly k parts. Now we are saying that the largest part is k. Now show that p star of nk is equal to p of nk. So basically the number of 
partitions where the largest part is k is in bijection with the number of partitions where the uh, number of parts is k now this is very surprising but uh, you know uh, but it is still uh, true so i want you to find this proof and when you do the proof make sure that you use only the ideas and relations that we have come across of i mean in the in the results that we have uh, used so far of course you can use some new idea but that's okay but we will use only the uh, results that we have come across so far because we are going to come up with a very different uh, very different uh, uh, proof for the same which is a pictorial proof so that is going to be uh, presented but uh, we don't want that uh, proof to be used here so try to come up with a proof on your own 